welcome back. So, um, I have finished painting my pinata. As you can see, I have my piglet pinata. On the other side, I decided to put Pooh Bear. Um, so, I have finished painting my pinata completely. Um, what I'm going to show you now is how we add that um, fringe around the pinata with tissue paper. So, I have a couple pieces of tissue paper to show you. I have three large red pieces. So, what I'm going to do is I'm lining up the tissue paper and I'm gonna fold it about three and a half inches all the way. Um, I'm gonna keep kind of rolling this into itself so I could do multiple cuts at a time. Um, just kind of maximizes my time. So as you can see, I'm starting to roll this out. Laying it flat every time. So it didn't fold evenly, so I'm just gonna cut that extra trim off. Right now I'm just kind of prepping on how um, I want my fringe to look around my pinata. And as you've hopefully seen, or you know, by doing a quick Google search or looking it up on Pinterest, there are multiple ways in doing the pinata fringe. I'm gonna grab my scissors. There are multiple ways in cutting the pinata fridge, dep fringe, depending on how you wanna show. So sometimes, you know, I have um, examples around the classroom with the wide fringe. Sometimes you want the smaller fringe so it looks more hairy. You know, sometimes you want the bubbles. Um, so there's, there's definitely many different ways in which we could do that. So I'm gonna show you real quick some examples. Um, I'll show you three different kind of small examples. So sometimes people like the really large, wide fringes, okay? And then we could, as we um, attach them, we could kind of just bend them a little bit and it gives them that fun angle so it sits off of the pinata. As you can see there, they're about an inch wide. Um, a second style is uh, when you cut them very clean and close to each other and that's gonna give it more of like a hairy or like a grass look. As you can see, I'm not cutting all the way to the top. This is gonna leave some space for me to attach it to my pinata, which I will be showing you on my example. So I'm just kind of cutting little hairs. Yeah, I'm not going all the way. All right. And then again, I might want to curl it a little bit, you know? And then I'd have little hair sticking out of my pinata as well. Hopefully you could see that. And then, you know, maybe uh, I have a student doing a mermaid this year, so maybe you want to cut it into like a scale. Right, obviously you could do these scales as large as you want, but it also gives you the option to overlap them, maybe play with different colors like purples and greens and blues, uh, depending on what color tissue paper we have. So here's a way we could do some scales, All right? I bend it a little bit, and I have my scales that can stick off and I could layer them up so it really looks um, like a good example. And then the last one I'm gonna show you, I guess I'll show you one more example. Um, Sometimes people like the curls, how it curls off the pinata, so I cut my piece of tissue paper. Um, I'm folding it in half, and then I'm going to just make small cuts on the side that's folded. Okay, I won't do the whole thing. So I made small cuts on the side that's folded, and then I could attach the different layers down, and it creates, uh, as you can see, small openings. So I could attach one side down to the pinata, and then I fold it a little bit and I attach the other side down to the pinata and it creates kind of these fun lumps, those like flower petal type lumps. So it depends on whatever style you like to do. Um, I'm gonna stick with more of like the small grass style, I think just to make it a little simpler for my example. So I have my tissue paper folded. I'm going to be cutting down the walls to basically be cutting these into long strips. I just wanna cut multiple at a time just to maximize my time, okay? Okay. Okay. I also know that my pinata is only uh, six inch walls. So I know that if I fold this in half, I'm going to exceed it. So therefore, to really maximize 
my tissue paper, I'm going to cut all of them in half. Okay. If you want to do multiple colors, you absolutely can. If you want to do the whole rainbow, you can. If you want to keep it all the same color, you can. It's completely up to you. So I now have a bunch of cut tissue papers the same length. So again, I like to cut multiple at a time. I am choosing to do the um, grass, like hair kind of style, where I cut them very close to each other. It's going to be this style. So what I'm going to use as my example. So I have one side all lined up. And with my scissors, I'm going to come through and I'm going to cut them. But like you can see, I'm not cutting it all the way. I'm leaving about an inch gap. That's so I can use an adhesive and attach uh, the tissue paper to my project. So I'm coming through and I'm cutting this about two to two and a half of the inches really close to each other because I want that grass kind of style. You can see I'm getting, I'm sliding my right hand down and cutting with my left. Obviously yours should be reversed if you're right-handed. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, as you know, we're gonna be layering these tissue papers as well as it's gonna kind of curl around the pinata. So these cuts necessarily don't have to be spot on and perfect. If you know you messed up on one, you don't gotta throw out the whole kitchen sink. So. I have my skirt all cut up multiple different layers, okay? However, personally, I'm going to be rotating colors. So I have red. Let me get rid of my trash, clean up my station. Okay, I have red. I also have yellow, and I also have blue. So I'm gonna show you how to attach these. Uh, personally, I like to attach them, even though it's a little longer, I have it exceed off the side. Um, and then I go around and I trim the rest off. So I know that it's uniform and it matches. All right, so I have my pinata, all right? Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start off, I have my tissue paper accessible. I'll leave it in the frame so you can see it. I'm gonna start off with red. So I'm grabbing one, all right? For this part, you are going to be using a glue stick. So I have my glue sticks, okay? And I'm going to be laying glue down on the section of tissue paper that I did not cut, the straight side that I did not cut. As you can see, I'm doing multiple runs of it because I wanna make sure it stays on my pinata. Um, if you've worked with glue sticks before, you know it's not the strongest thing in the world. So I put extra. Um, and then I'm going to start at the bottom of my project. I'll start towards you. I'm going to start towards the bottom of my project so I can layer this up. And I'm going to compress it all the way down, making sure that glue is sticking from side to side. As you can see, I'm going above my pinata as well as I'm going below my pinata. The reason I'm doing this, like I said earlier, is because once it's all done, because it's tissue paper, I could come in and I could come trim all these edges off and make sure it's aligned and perfect as I want it. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a couple reds and then I'll do a couple yellows. So again, I get my cut tissue paper, got my glue stick. I'm laying glue down on my tissue paper. Okay. And then now I'm gonna lay it close enough that my new fringe is covering the old part that I glued down. Cause I don't want that ugly section that I glued to um, be exposed. So I'm kind of overlapping it a bit, but I'm not gluing it on top of, I'm just right next to. So as you can see, when I show you my pinata, the fringe that I just glued is covering the old fringe. It's kind of important because um, you don't want big gaps. You know, you don't want your pinata to look like an amateur made it. And y'all are pros because you're in an art two class. So uh, I'll do one more red. And then uh, I'm going to stop the video, continue, and show you what the pinata looks like completely done. So 
I lay my glue all over the part that is not cut. I lay it next to where I just laid the other one down, having that fringe cover the section I, I previously glued to kind of cover up my airs. And you want to make sure you rub the glue into your project. All right. So I'm gonna continue this process. I'm gonna alternate my colors just to kind of make it a little fun. And I'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so I have just finished um, laying down all the fringe on my pinata. So all I need to do now is cut it and I am done. So um, as you can see, it's everywhere. I chose the primary colors. Um, I'm cutting around the edge of my pinata. Again, I'm just doing one side at a time. I don't need to rush it. I'm right there. I'm almost done. one side done. I just need to trim the back. So all these little scraps I am going to end up uh, throwing away just because, you know, they're not really large enough for me to use or recycle for any other project. However, as you can see, I still have really large piles of extra um, fringe that I cut and that I didn't use for my project. So I will be storing those off to the side for any students um, who could use it. I am going to ask that you do the same. If you you know, wanna use pink and purple or you just wanna use green, um, if you have extra, please, please don't throw it away if they're long pieces that can be used for another project because um, we can recycle it for someone else. And it's just a nice thing to do. official I have a pinata okay so I have my hook that I hot glued at the beginning here's my Pooh Bear pinata and on the other side I got a beautiful piglet everything's been cut and trimmed and as well you could see the pattern of my primary colors okay you could see the pattern of my primary my primary colors that I chose as the hair on my pinata and it's all fun and crazy so um, I just need to cut a hole in the top and this guy's ready to stuff with candy. So I'll go get a blade and show you how to do that. All right, so I'm ready to cut a hole um, in the front of my pinata. I'm sorry, on the top of my pinata. And this will be um, an access point that I could put candy in. Please remember, uh, do not cut your hole on the side or on the bottom because as you hang it or you try to use it, um, the candy can just pour out. So I have an X-Acto knife. All I'm doing is stabbing in the top and I'm cutting a line down my project, okay? Uh, in that same hole that I started in, I'm cutting towards me, which is the long way of my project. Oh, I feel my hot glue. I'm gonna have to go around it. I'll make a cool little handle thing. I'm not cutting this all the way to the edge because um, I, I don't want to change uh, the appearance of this front or sides of my pinata, so I cut about that far down. I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not pre-measuring or anything, just large enough that I know I could get a couple good pieces of candy in there. All right, and I'm just kind of pushing and bending. And now I have an awesome, awesome hole that I could add candy in. That also, since it's made of cardboard, I can just tuck it right back in and it hides and blends well. 
So that's it, folks. We made our first pinata. This is our first style. I hope you love it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope um, as you make it and you learn from it, um, you learn fun other interesting designs or ways to cut the fringe. And if so, please bring those ideas forward. Thank you for watching the video.